Hello again, everyone. I am here with the nominees for the role playing game of the year. Welcome to the 24th annual Dice Awards developer sessions. Uh, we are super excited and super uh, fortunate to have this wonderful group with us here of nominees. Uh, but before we get into the discussion, let's do a little bit of introductions. Uh, from Final Fantasy VII Remake, we have Hamaguchi san. How are you, Hamaguchi san? Hi, how are you? Very good. Uh, thank you for being here. And can you share? Uh, with the folks at home, a little bit of information about yourself. Uh, FF7 Remake, the Kyodo director of Tsutomita Hamaguchi. Hi, nice to meet you. My name is Naoki Hamaguchi, and I was a co director on Final Fantasy VII Remake. Thank you very much for being here. Appreciate the time. Uh, from Persona 5 Royal, we have Ariane Advicula. How are you doing? Good, how are you? Thank you for having me. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, thank you so much for, for, for coming in and spending some time with us. Give the folks at home a little bit of information about yourself as well. So I'm the communications manager at Sega here representing the Persona 5 Royal development team and of course the entire Atlas and Sega team. Happy thank to be you here. so much. Thank you so much for being here as well. Uh, from Wasteland 3, we have Brian Fargo. How are you doing, Brian? I'm good. How are you? How are you? Doing well, doing well. Give the folks at home a little info about the work you've done in the space as well. Uh, well, I, I've been in the industry uh, since the 80s. I founded a company called Interplay. We did a lot of great games back then, but Baldur's Gate and Fallout and uh, Bard's Tale and Wasteland. And then I founded this company uh, that I'm in now with an exile and we became part of Microsoft recently. And most of my background has been with role playing games. Awesome, awesome. So, so happy to have you with us as well. Uh, and rounding out our group, we have from Yakuza Like a Dragon, we have Yokoyama-san, how are you doing, Yokoyama-san? Hello, Konnichiwa. Ryuga Gotoku series, the chief producer at Yokoyama. Hi, everyone. Nice to meet you. I'm the chief producer on the Ryuga Gotoku Yakuza series, and my name is Yokoyama. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, we also had our friends from CD Projekt Red with Cyberpunk 2077 nominated as well, but sadly, they couldn't make it. Uh, uh, for the show tonight, but they definitely wanted to send their congratulations to all the nominees for all their amazing work. So with that said, let's jump into some questions for, for our crew here today. Um, let's see. For, uh, Brian, I'd love to kind of jump to you first and talk about Wasteland 3 and, and how, you know, the game has been touted as this improvement, this huge improvement over the previous game in kind of every way, um, you know, Talk to me about, you know, how some of those improvements kind of came to be. What were some of the thoughts behind, you know, building that out in such a bigger way? Uh, I'd love to hear your thoughts about, you know, kind of the, the transition and the evolution of the game. Right. Well, so, and, and this been, it's been a fun project because it's been a franchise that started a long time ago. And as we, you know, like, like I said, the first one started in the 80s. But as far as moving from number two to number three, uh, we knew that we wanted to make a big visual upgrade, which we've done. Um, you know, a lot of this has to do with, you know, the, the bigger the budget, the, you know, the, the, the kind of the bigger the approach we can take, but the, the visuals were a big jump. We also really leaned in on a really unique soundtrack. I, um, I hired the music supervisor who worked on the Tarantino films, and we have a really great, unique soundtrack that I'm happy with. Uh, we made combat move faster. That was something that we didn't want to lose the tactical nature of it. So we moved to a phase-based system that could move quicker. Um, but I think the things that the players uh, embraced the most was the reactivity and the dark humor. Uh, and that was <laughs> something that where we want the game to pay off as many edge cases and decisions that the, uh, the people could make uh, so that they could each sort of have their own unique experience in the wasteland. I love that. It, it, it definitely felt like there was a, a an evolution in, in kind of a lot of the different systems that went along with that. And it feels like, you know, the feedback, you know, how much of that was driven from the feedback that you got from the previous game? Uh, quite a bit. I mean, we, we, we try to have a, a very, a very sort of blunt relationship with our fans. We love the feedback back and forth for what, for what they're thinking, what they like and what they don't like. And we, we you know, leaning in on the reactivity was a big part of it. Um, 
again, not losing the tactical nature of it. That was something that, that they wanted to see. We also added multiplayer, which was, which, which was a new thing for us. Uh, we thought having a co-op experience with our type of deep storytelling game would be fun. And we, we've had a lot of get really great feedback from that too. Uh, so, uh, yeah, it was very much part and parcel of working with the fans and things they'd like to see. And, and we'll continue that relationship. Fantastic. And thank you. Thank you for sharing that. That's, that's super awesome. Uh, Hamaguchi-san, this question is for you. Uh, Final Fantasy VII Remake is able to capture the essence of its original predecessor while updating its gameplay mechanics, visuals, and expanded story. Uh, which aspect were, were kind of the most exciting parts of kind of connecting that with the fans? And, and what was the most difficult part of the element to kind of translate to the modern day? So, this is まあ、原作はやっぱすごくファンの多いタイトルだったのであのいろいろな面でその原作のエッセンスっていうのは非常にこう意識はしたんですけどその中でも最もやっぱり注力したってのは世界観の部分を一番こう意識していましたで、まあ、原作の FF7 っていうのは当然当時のこう表現の技術っていうのもあると思うんですけどその表現する幅なんか表世界観の表現っていうのはすごく断片的で表現されていたのでこうユーザーのこのなんだろうこうイマジネーションとかこう創造性で結構保管されている部分が多くてそれを今回の FF7 リメイクっていうのはこうしっかりそこをこう緻密に描くことでよりリアリティを持ったこう FF7 の世界っていうのを体験できるっていうところをすごく注力していますなので実際にこうゲームが出てこうユーザーのこう反応を見たときにこうスラム街からこう表現されているメインキラーのこう表現だったりこう市街地のプレートの表現だったりとか、まあ、スラム街に住む人々の仕草がセリフ回しみたいなところに結構こう反響があったっていうか我々のこう狙った通りのものになったのかなというふうに思っています。Um, of course, with the、um, original source material having such a large fan base already, it was important for us to sort of keep the essence of the source material. But we were very keen on sort of bringing that worldview and the world setting to the game. And with the original Final Fantasy VII and、um, the way things are depicted at that time、um, and the technolog technological restrictions.、Um, Only allowed for us to depict the story in different facets,、um, in like bits and pieces per se. And so we were very、um, focused on trying to depict more of the realm and the, and the lore of Final Fantasy VII,、um, because a lot of it kind of depended on the user's imagination and them kind of completing the picture in their minds、um, at the time. So with Final Fantasy VII Remake, we tried to make it more intricate、uh, so that we can bring that sort of reality, sense of reality in the way we're、um, depicting the world. And once the game did release and people started playing it and, and giving their feedback, Um, we've noticed a lot of people commenting on how、um, the slum areas were depicted and、uh, looking at the main pillar,、uh, looking at some of the outskirts of、um, the towns and seeing the NPCs and how they're acting,、uh, how they're talking,、um, received quite a, a bit of reaction from our fans. So we're, we're kind of、uh, happy that we were able to achieve what we were going for. Did, did you find that? Newer players who were kind of coming to the story for the first time in Remake had very, very different feedback than folks who had already kind of come to the story from the original. やっぱりすごくこうなんだろうなその F7 っていうもの自体が実際プレイしてなくてもなんかこう原作だけじゃなくて F7 の別のタイトルとかで結構このなんだろうなキーワードをすごく聞くあのー。タイトルだと思ってるんですねなので実際にこうゲームを体験してみた時にあこういうゲームだったんだみたいな声とかはあの聞きはしましたねあとこう本編をプレイしてからこうやってみるとその違いがあの分かるから楽しいよとか,なんか結構そのやっているあの F7 自体をプレイしてくれてた人としてない人とかで結構コミュニケーションしてるのとかは結構あのネット上の書き込みとかを見てあの私自身は結構楽しく感じていました。あの With people who have not played the source material,、um, I think they are, even if they're not familiar with the game itself, they've heard different keywords throughout their um, gaming um, lives. That's stemming from Final Fantasy VII.、Um, and some people have actually. Tried to play the original source material、um, after hearing、um, or after playing the remake and, and fed back saying, Oh, this is how the original experience was.、Um, and then there's also people who played the original and then played the remake、um, who would 
compare what was different between the two. Um, so it is it is quite interesting. And I personally have seen um, the different communication that goes on between players who have and have not played the source material. And it's very interesting to see. That's fantastic. Thank you. Thank you so much for that thoughtful answer. I dearly do appreciate that. Uh, Ariane, I'm, I'm curious to hear your thoughts around Persona 5 Royal and, you know, a lot of folks have talked about how this game enhances nearly every single feature from Persona 5. And, 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 and I'm curious to hear, like, what areas from the original release did you did the team kind of really identify and, and focus as areas for improvement? So for us, Persona 5 Royal is actually a brand new Persona 5 experience. Um, mm -hmm. For the team, you know, we brought in new faces or new twists. Um, there's a new power that's added to that original Persona 5 narrative and you know our team welcomed the opportunity to integrate those new plot lines taking a time to revisit and like polish areas of whether it was a localization or from the development standpoint um, and honestly we also had the opportunity to to work with teams internationally and deliver additional localized languages which is a persona series first so honestly the scale of the massive narrative you see in persona 5 royal is unlike anything uh, we've ever worked on as a team. But um, honestly, we're just extremely excited that we can have people enjoy this new definitive version of Persona 5 story. Um, and just um, just like what we were saying earlier about fans, like I'm also honored to see all the praise that the story has received and, and to be considered for this award. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. I think one of the things I've, I've, I've constantly heard about the game is how 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 well it kind of, you know, brings all the story bits together and, and how, you know, everyone is kind of in love with that story. Has, have you heard any new feedback or new information from, again, newer players who are coming to the series for the first time and, and how they're kind of coming to it? Yes, that's what's very exciting for me. Uh, I think just seeing the newer players come in and fall in love with the Phantom Thieves, uh, Kasumi, Baruki, the new characters, it's been a joy you know, personally for me, but also for the developers to see more and more people come into the Persona narrative. And we also just released Persona 5 Strikers. So, you know, the story continues. There, There is even more Phantom Thieves to, to enjoy. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, Yokoyama-san, this question is for you. Uh, Yakuza Like a Dragon feels like a love letter to turn-based turn -based RPGs, both in kind of the Ichiban's literal love of Dragon Quest and, and many homages, homages to uh, you know, other games throughout the series, you know, can you talk a little bit about, you know, how you and your team have approached building the game uh, around the story and, and, and the appreciation for it? えっと、まずあの、コマンドRPGを作ろうと思ってこのゲームを作ったわけではなくて、カスが1番というキャラクターを作るところがスタートなんですね。で、カスが1番のキャラクターを考えていたら、このキャラクターのストーリーを考えていくうちに一番この物語が感動を与えるゲームシステムは何だろうって考えた結果あのRPGシステムになったっていう考え方で作ってますまず最初のスタートしてんですけど So first off, um, the starting point for the team was not really to create a command-based RPG game, but we wanted to really um, hone in on the character of Ichiban Kasuga and we wanted to develop his character and think about you know, how best to tell this character's story, um, in what ways can we make the players really um, dive in and, and feel for this character. And as we explored that, the RPG system um, really came to fit for this character. So that was the first starting point for us. Yeah, <laughs> の、ま、スタッフ、ゲームデザイナーたちがみんなもうある程度若い年齢の人が多くて、あの、青春時代はドラゴンクエストとかファイナルファンタジーとともに生きてきたっていう人が結構当たり前になってるんですね。なので、え
really kind of um, point to your comment about how this feels like a love letter to um, RPGs. This uh, actually, all, a lot of the designers on the team and the, um, the developers on the team are young in their youth. They really played a lot of RPGs. They have like a really special place in their hearts for games like Dragon Quest or Final Fantasy. Um, and so when the decision, the decision was made to uh, make Yakuza Like a Dragon um, in a command RPG style game, the staff really just had so many, it like kind of opened up their floodgates of ideas. They had such a great love for the genre and just for games in general that the ideas poured out. And so it's kind of a, it is sort of a huge love letter from the entire team um, for the genre. Fantastic. Hmm. I, I, I love to hear that. It, one of the other parts of that that I wanted to, to, to talk about was humor is a huge part of, of the game and it feels like you've nailed you know, bringing the funny aspects into to, to the story. What was that for, you know, what was the conversation like from the team about making sure that that was something that still kind of came through within the game? Kikuku,その、キャラクターが変われば行動原理が変わるんで、えっと、すべての発想ってのはさっきも話したけど、え、カスが一番だったらどんなことをしたら楽しいんだろうなってことを考えて、いわゆるプレイスポットとかミニゲームとかの中身を決めていくんですね。で、カスが一番がえ仲間にしたキャラクターたちの性格とか、このメンバーがみんなでワイワイこういうことをやったら楽しいだろうなみたいなことを考えてい
And it's the most fun to watch when we watch people play. Um, but what's important is that we give them the opportunity not to be a good person. And a lot of the humor comes through those choices where just the fact that the player can say it uh, gives them a chuckle, but they often don't want to follow through because they don't want to be uh, that person. So really, I, I guess the, the humor comes from the giving people to an ability to have, see, have a dark side uh, along with a very dark humor with it uh, is where we look to sort of make things work in our universe. Thank you. I love that. It's it, it seems like a very um, an interesting challenge to maybe you know pull that through so that the, the 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 player feels like they're able to still have that autonomy, but also you know still feel like they can can interact with the, the spaces in a in a good way, right? We, we have we have a lot of funny conversation in our writers' rooms because we we tell the writers to push to push it, and then we'll pull them back, and so. Mm. Uh, I always tell when people, you should see what didn't make it in the game, <laughs> you know? Uh, uh, and uh, so anyway, some very funny conversations about where that is, but our players, they, they like, they like that. You know, we, we make, we make our game for an audience that, you know, would like a Tarantino film or some, you know, some of the Netflix stuff that's, you know, more, or, or like the boys and things of that nature uh, where the humor is, is more adult. And, uh, our, and our audience loves that. And so we, we, we sort of pay that off with, when we think it's appropriate. I love that. Um, the last question I have is both for Hamaguchi-san and for Ariane. How, how has it been kind of trying to balance the, you know, ability to let some of these iconic characters grow, um, but also kind of being careful not to do too much so that they wind up being a little bit different than, you know, what people have kind of grown up to, to know and to love? Uh, Yamaguchi, I'm sorry, Hamaguchi-san, can you please uh, uh, answer that one first? So, this is a little bit of a balance, but it's a little bit of 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 まあ、声も入ってないし、こうフェイシャルで何かこう感情を伝えることもできないんで、結構オーバーリアクションでこう、あのー、喜ぶときはなんかこう体でこうすごくこう演技で表現をしてたんですけど、今回まあ、あの、もうやっぱすごくこう、20年以上こう時が流れて、やっぱ表現ですごく映画チックな表現ができるので、こうフェイシャルでもこう表現できますし、声でも表現できます。もしくはもう声をなくても、顔の表情だけで、あ、なんかちょっと悔しがってるんだなっていうのを伝えれるので、逆にその原作の時の、そのまあ、クラウドに限らないんですけどその主人公たちがそのストーリーの中でどういう感情になっているのかとここでどういう,こう思いをユーザーに伝えたいのかみたいなところを読み解きながらこうあ,あの当時だったらきっとこういうことだったんだろうなみたいなのをすごくこう意識してあのなんだろうなストーリーだけじゃなくてストーリーを表現する仕方ですねあのを<笑>注力して表現しました。Um, so this might not necessarily describe the balance we try to strike between um, growing and being careful, um, but uh, what we did think about is at the time of the original source material, um, of course, the way things are depicted cinematically is very limited um, because of the hardware. And so whenever the player controls cloud and anything happens, like um, if he's doing some kind of movement, um, there is no voiceover, there is no facial like animation to show the characters um, sort of actions and emotions. So it would be very exaggerated. Um, some overactions like body actually moving, showing the different emotions of the characters. Um, and with the remake, um, we were able to have a more cinematic, like movie-like depiction of these characters um, with voiceover, with very um, nuanced facial expressions. Um, we might have scenes where we don't even have a, a dialogue and it's just a facial expression um, trying to evoke the emotion of the particular scene. So whenever we were thinking about um, the characters and our, just how we depict um, all of our 
sort of protagonists in general, um, we would um, try to think about the emotions that they were feeling in a particular scene um, and sort of imagine, okay, so in this particular area, they must have tried to express this in that sort of limited capacity. And um, we tried to um, express that more throughout um, the story as well as um, the cinematic presentation as well. So that, that's where we try to focus on when we were trying um, to, to create uh, the characters in the remake. Ariana, I'd love to hear your thoughts on that as well uh, about, you know, kind of balancing the, you know, the passion of the fans with, you know, wanting to grow the story of the characters, but also keeping them true to, their, to, to themselves. That's a great question. Actually, you know, having just released Persona 5 Strikers, I do think the passion of the fans is what's always at the front of the mind of the developers and the localization team. Um, the only thing I can think of really is just how much, you know, we've been able to take these characters and see them grow and see them continue their story. And, you know, the fans have always received them with welcome, well, open arms. And that's been a wonderful feeling to, to know that. You know, everybody wants them to to be their to have their best life, and uh, I can only think of an excerpt that I heard from the localization team, but also the voice actors themselves. Is you know, having known the Phantom Thieves from the original Persona Five, going into Royal felt like a homecoming. It felt like an opportunity. Now that they know the characters, to extend and grow. You know, we know what Ryuji would say in this situation, and he's going to say it. And I think that's really <laughs> just been. <laughs> a really rewarding thing and the fans know it too they see it coming and you know that's, that's the beauty of having very strong uh characters that are driving the story forward well thank you so much for your wonderful wonderful thoughts on the games that you've made and, and the conversations around you know how role-playing games are, are so important and, and and great in the space uh i get to now do the fun part of declaring who the winner is for for this category uh, our dice role-playing game of the year goes to Final Fantasy VII Remake. Congratulations. Awesome, awesome. Uh, let's see. Amaguchi-san, do you have any, any uh, uh, words to share for the folks at home? Thank you. あの、ま、FF7リメイク自体の展開ってま、今後も続いていきますので、また次回作でもこの場に戻ってこれように頑張っていきますので、あの、はい、期待してください。今日はありがとうございます。Thank you so much for being here again and for spending time with us. Again, you have all put so much wonderful work into the games you've put into the world and we really do appreciate all the time you spent with us here today.